Inside Dog had a lot of interest in my new little um, tectonics oscilloscope, so um, I was telling my friend that I really should give away the oscilloscope and I, I need a replacement, and so he gave me this one. Um, this is a Keysight uh, DXA-X. 86100D, and that's the mainframe. And then you can get different plugins for it. And so I've got two plugins here. Uh, the left plugin is a 50 gigahertz dual channel oscilloscope plugin. And the right plugin is a, I think it's 18 gigahertz um, TDR um, plugin that does a uh, uh, T11 and T21. Um, so that's that. And then a few more plugins. Uh, these are all oscilloscope plugins. A, uh, let's see, a 20 gigahertz, another 20 gigahertz, and a 50 gigahertz. Um, so all, if you notice, they're all branded differently. The older ones are branded HP. This one's branded Agilent. Uh, these plugins are Agilent. And then the mainframe is Keysight. So now the whole thing is about 20 years old now. So uh, people who need fast oscilloscopes, these are just too slow today. Um, 50, 50 gigahertz is just too slow. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Let's turn it on. Um, so it's a, uh, a Windows machine. Uh, love it or hate it. Uh, the software still says Agilent, even though it's in a Keysight box. Um, it does boot up fairly reasonable for a, uh, for a Windows device. Um, for whatever reason, it always comes up with that message. Uh, he said, just ignore it. So that's what I'm going to do. And then it always starts fine. Uh, starting Windows. Now, um, this is a sampling oscilloscope. This is not a real-time oscilloscope. Um, and so uh, the signal path did a really nice video where he dissected one of these uh, one of these plugins and talked about how sampling oscilloscopes work. I'll try to remember to put it in the link below. Um, uh, Flex DCA is the name of the software they wrote for these things. Um, so, what can it do? Well, it can look at edges really nice. Most people who are buying these oscilloscopes are gonna be looking at fast data, you know, 50, 50 gigabyte type of signals and stuff, doing eye diagrams, um, things like that. So they're care, they care about edges and um, clock jitter, things like that. So uh, this thing right, on, right from the get-go um, has uh, some buttons on the front so we can take a look at those. Uh, it has an eye diagram mode, a TDR or TDT. So TDR is uh, time domain reflectometry, and then uh, the TDT is time domain transmission. So this is S11, S21. Uh, it has scope mode. Um, it has jitter analysis. And then it has some apps, uh, which uh, are options this machine does not have. This machine doesn't have any options at all. I'm trying to get some options, but I think that's going to be a lost cause. It's a discontinued item, and it's really hard to get software stuff out of Keysight. So anyway, fingers crossed, but um, yeah. So yeah, 50 gigahertz. Um, this will just be an introductory video. Next video, I'll show you some, some measurements that the thing can make. An instrument like this would be really good for looking at fast rise times on things like the... Uh, Leo Bonnard uh, uh, pulse generator that I have. We could measure the rise time of the pulse on this. Uh, the TDR function is, is really, really useful. And uh, people just think that it's for finding uh, uh, data, uh, 
problems in cables. Where, where, is, where is the coax kinked or broken or whatever? Now you can really use TDR with a fast oscilloscope like this to go in to the actual data lines of your PC board and trace out any discontinuities or impedance problems and stuff. You can actually uh, monitor the impedance through the system with this to about two millimeter resolution. I think the distance resolution and this will be about two millimeters. So it will narrow down any problems you got. Um, and uh, if your impedance is correct or not. Um, like I said, it's a Windows machine, so you can put in a keyboard, you can put in a mouse, you can put in a thumb drive. It does have LAN on the back and uh, a VGA and a DVI and a LAN connection. So um, I think what I want to do is to put on a screen capture device, a, a video capture device, so um, you can see a nice picture of what's going on when we uh, do the next video. Okay, instead of me always kind of zooming in here and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So yeah, I'll get that working and we'll start making some measurements. Um, yeah, nice toy. I think these originally were $100,000, $150,000, something like that, depending on the plugins and stuff. Uh, but like I said, they're way too old. To do work today in the communications business, you need, you know, like a hundred gigahertz, uh, at least type of machine. And then you're talking about maybe a quarter of a million dollars uh, for one of those. And uh, these just go on the junk heap and they find their way to uh, MSI Guy's Garage.